This is awesome. I'm in the sauna with Lorenzo Neal. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All right, Matt Stein, Matt Dow, the Guru Johnson with you. And we are joined by one of the greatest <laughs> fullbacks of all time. He's been nominated for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You can also hear him on the kickoff show with Larry Kruger this Sunday at the Hilton Santa Clara from 11 to 1 p.m. before the 49ers Cardinals game. Hey, Lo, how you doing? Steiny Guru, my guys, how we been, brothers? We're we're doing well. We're doing well. Uh, hey, whatever happened to that race you were going to have with Goo? By the way, oh, Lo, yeah, Goo's Goo's. I seen Goo. I've been check, keeping an eye on Goo, <laughs> waiting for you know. But you guys seen my pictures? I'm I'm down. I'm back to my playing weight. Dude. I've seen that drop like thirty pounds. So. Guru has, you know, slim to none chance now, and none has left the building. Lo, you're pretty in the face, slim in the waist. I've been following <laughs> you too, and I got to tell you, man, you do it. You're you're a natural on TV. Give me low for two hours. Listen, I th there was a shirt left here in the studio with you for your campaign to get into the Hall of Fame. I I was telling Stiney, I came in excited. Had you been here before in regard to the nomination, you have. But Lo, how effed up is it that the NFL? Like, I feel like they're eating their own when you were the guy that, you know, in, introduced LT at his Hall of Fame. I mean, just talk about it. Are you over it? Do you think this can happen? Where is Low Neal at on this nomination? Because I think it's BS, and I've seen you play. Uh, you know, it's, hey, Guru, as always, man, I, I appreciate you guys. And just appreciate just the vote of confidence. I, I just think, honestly, guys, know we've been down this road, this rabbit hole, and it gets deeper and deeper. But... I think somebody should be in. I understand when you look at Franco Harris, they said he went in as a fullback, but Franco Harris was carrying the ball. And I think they got to be better lanes of def defining what is a fullback. Because if you talk about who should be in the Hall of Fame as a running fullback, Mike Allsott, hands down. If you look at Mike Allsott, what he was, he was just like a Larry Zonka. He was just like, a, you know, Franco. And you think about Mike Allsott and you watch him, this guy was a beast. And, you know, he played both positions. But if you're talking about just a pure running fullback, hands down, Mike all starts to be there. And then when you think about a guy just catching a ball out of the backfield, and I go down this roll, this roller coaster ride all the time, is Larry Sinners. When you watch the Arizona Cardinals, you go pick up, look up Larry Sinners, caught 100 passes in one season. He was a great chipper, great, you know, he did a lot of things. He was kind of the modern-day Cal Hustek. If you look at Larry Sinners, pair a little Larry, LC, look him up. Compare him to Hustek, the way he blocked, not necessarily a punishing block, but he knew how to get body position. As a receiver, he's probably better than Hustek, and not much. But so it's so many guys, and then you talk about just bangers. Look at Moose Johnson, what he did for Emmitt Smith. You know, people don't talk about Corey Schlesinger. You look at Sam Gash. There's so many guys that are worthy of the Hall of Fame, and I, I, I definitely believe that I am, and I think that I am worthy of it, and I think that there's a lot of guys uh, in my shoes that feel the same way about themselves. Lorenzo Neal joining us on 95.7 The Game. All right, so, Lo, we were doing, you know, the show earlier today. We were oh, talking yeah. about, uh, the, we were actually talking about the Giants, but I said, Lorenzo Neal uh, coming up at noon, and we had a guy call in, a guy named Will from Marin, who was going to talk about the, the Giants, but then he said, no, I got to talk about oh, Lorenzo man. Neal first. Take take a listen to this caller, uh, Lo. You'll like so, it. First off, I just want to say about Lorenzo Neal. Mm. He for sure deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, and this is why. Okay. Corey Dillon was irrelevant. He went. He literally went to New England, and Corey Dillon was his old self and rushed for, like, what, 1,500 yards behind that man? Mm. Then, uh, if you look at the Ravens, they were uh, in dire need of running back help, so they made uh, LaRon McClain, who was a fullback, into – a running back, and due to Lorenzo Neal opening up jumbo jet lanes, that fullback rushed for 900-plus yards and I think double-digit touchdowns. And then, now let's bring it back even farther. Okay. When Warwick Dunn and Mike Allstott were killing it in Tampa Bay, surprise, surprise, who was doing the dirty work? Not only one other, Lorenzo Neal. And then, also, let's bring it back to the Hall of Fame, who gave Lorenzo Neal not all of the credit Mm. was that one LT, LaDainian Tomlinson, mm. said without Lorenzo Neal, I would have probably not have been successful or as successful and put up the numbers. So I think Lorenzo is a for sure, sure shot. He is a game changer for running backs, and he opens up lanes. And if you go and watch the tape, 
he is so violent on the point of contact. It's like having an athletic like guard pulling, except he's just exploding from the three point stance. It's like having Nick Bosa or Justin Smith blocking for you offensively. It was so what. violent. I'm he sold did it so well. He was a beast. Yeah, Whoa. I'm sold. You got to be in the Hall of Hey, you got a fan in Will though. Wow, Will just gave it to me, guys. I got to give that guy a raise. Can you guys, Guru and Steiny, why don't you guys throw him a couple bucks out of you guys' big like, tech since you guys ah, are making that big money? Uh, ah. All right. I'm, Lo, you probably forgot some of that stuff even. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He did a very great job. I did. He was bringing back memory, especially the one that he talked about, LeRon McClain. I think, you know, a lot of people don't talk about that, but with the playoffs, LeRon McClain had over 1,000 yards. He had 900, like, next year with – do you know regular season and when the playoffs we went over a thousand so that is one that was a tough feat because this guy he he was in every day watching film with me and he wanted to be great and i he I took him under my wings and uh he made the pro bowl that year guys he was offered to fly me there he wanted to get, get my hotel put me up at the hotel fly me to the pro bowl take care of all my food and all that stuff and i've already been to five and i just said hey you know what you know what leron thank you so much and that was a big deal for him to wanting to do that and I, I i didn't want to do it because hey this guy was young did wasn't making the big money yet so um yeah so very very grateful so yeah will did a great job man but how about them niners man three and oh guys i was just gonna ask you that will uh will that was uh low wow. because <laughs> listen i'm so at peace with myself when i talk about kyle shanahan and i know i talked to w- about the situational play calling um the inception of mccaffrey below Every NFL team should want a Kyle Shanahan. He's built this offense. He's taken the offense that did not have a um, Christian McCaffrey to a Super Bowl already. I'm watching this. It's like chess and checkers. I don't know where the season's going to end up low. I think it's Philly and San Francisco when it's all said and done. But how much more kudos can I give Kyle for what he's built to look at a Debo, a Brandon Ayuk, what they have now, it's just dangerous, and what he's calling low looks unstoppable. You say what to all that? Yeah, Guru, I'm going to tell you right now, I love coming on and talking to you, Steiny. And Steiny <laughs> must God. just enjoy being around you because it's like, you know, you can't say anything now because, you know, we live in this PC culture, mm. so I can't give you a hard time. But you're just like the rain. You move the with the wind. First, sometimes Steiny, he wants to kill yep. Kyle Shanahan. And <laughs> oh, it's a love hate relationship. But one thing, Google, the thing about you, though, you own it. When you, you own it. And that's what a lot of people don't do. You'll say when they, I think he's bad. I don't know about Cal, you know. And yeah. when, he's, when he's masterful, you're like, man. That's and it. that's what you get to see. The biggest thing, look at Jimmy G. And everyone talked about Jimmy G got him to the Super Bowl. Jimmy G carried this team. He just won. And, Steiny, you and I, so I got to I gotta take put these gloves back on because you and I had this discussion. Steiny, yeah, well, Jimmy G took him. I said, he did not take him. Stop it. And now look what his stats are at the Raiders because he didn't follow the system. See, this, mm. Al Shanahan and Google, you get it. This is a system, quarterback-driven type of system. If you follow the rules, you can have success in Cal Shanahan's offense. But this starts with belief. When quarterbacks think that they're in the, when they're in the league, Justin, you go to Justin, Justin Herbert. He has to be great for the Chargers. He's got to throw it all day over the field. Incredible. You look at certain quarterbacks, they got to be as magnificent. But if you look at Purdy in this system, he wouldn't thrive like this with the Raiders. He's not thriving like this with the Chargers. He's not having this success because he believes in Shanahan. If it says three-step drop and the corner's playing outside, outside shape, you know he's hitting his slant. When they got two safeties, two safeties deep, you know he's going to hit the middle of the field. This guy says, I am going to give me what they – I'm going to take what the defense give me, and I'm going to play within the system. Let me tell you right now, there is not a quarterback in the league that can play Kyle Shanahan's system as well as this guy because he is going to stay on script. He's going mm. to stay ahead of the sticks. He's going to stay ahead of the count. And that's what Purdy is doing masterful, and that's what he understands. He's not trying to be this great outstanding quarterback that everyone says, oh, he just says, I'm going to play within myself, and that's why he's efficient, guys, and that's why this team can win. And by the way, they're doing a great job doing it. Wow. Low Neal joining us on 95-7 The Game. Uh, let me just ask you one last uh, thing about the Hall of Fame because there, there are a lot of former players who uh, are on the cusp of the Hall of Fame, and some of them are – you know, probably embittered that they're not in, and other guys are elated when they get in. Some guys, it doesn't mean much 
uh, much to. Where do you think about this a lot, or or is it something that comes up here and there? And do you say yeah, it'd be nice, but like how how important would it be to you to to make the Hall of Fame? You know what? I would be elated, but it's going to change my life. Yes, <laughs> it, would it would it would I be a lot happier? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, guys. I'm not going crazy because some guys get so engulfed in it. You see them and they, they're mad. They're, you know, kicking mm. and fussing. What can that do? At the end of the day, it, it's you got to have a relationship. I, I can come on the show and you guys can give me a hard time, Steiny. You're like, I love your top three and all. And I love it because I know where you're coming from. And, and at the same sense, you it, the fans matter. Yes, the Hall of Fame is great. But individually, for you that you and Guru and a lot of people say, man, this guy's a Hall of Fame, and you guys know the way that I played, man, don't you think that's more, mm. uh, that's satisfaction for me, and that's gratitude to me. But yes, I'd like to be in the Hall of Fame, guys, but I'm not going to, it's not something that's going to be all mean all for me. Lo, you're the man. Absolutely. Really appreciate right, I gotta it, I got to ask him a quick one, Stan. Okay. Lo, you introduced uh, LT. I mean this. It's like best man in a wedding. If you were to get that call and get in, and I know I'm putting you on the spot, who would you ask to introduce you? You know, and I think that you got to do it the same way. I would do LT. I mean, I think, you know, if it's not LT, it would probably be my son, uh, Lorenzo. You know, because but it's because what LT meant for the league and what he was, MVP, and you guys watched the way he played. I think McCaffrey has some of the same traits as far as out of the backfield. You know, he's not... L, you know, not as, as nimble as LT, but if you think about what he did for the game running back and, 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 and what he did and how they view the running back position and how they view it now, LT kind of just re-energized the running back position. So it would it would be him, guys. And, and like always, guys, thanks for having me on. Anytime I can come All on. All day. Up, Stay in touch, Lo. Yep. Cheers, uh, thank you, Lo. You're the man. Appreciate it. And you man. can hear Lo, more Lo, uh, on the kickoff show with Larry Kruger. This Sunday at the Hilton Santa Clara from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. before the Niners Cardinals.